During Season 2 of my fantasy movie reviews, we began with adaptations of classic myths and observing how they've been transposed into film. I'll spare you the summary of what films we've done at this point, but there is one aspect about them that might have popped out to you about their plots if you've been following since Jason and the Argonauts, though it might be something you didn't consciously notice until I tell you. The real thread of these movies so far has been the idea of the quest for something. More specifically in the case of these movies, and the myths they're based on, an object. Jason seeks the Golden Fleece, Sinbad seeks the Book of Peace, Shushan quests for the Spirit Root, and Thor quests for his hammer Mjolnir. As you can see, such a plot is a fairly common theme in early myth, and it's one we still heavily use to this day. Moving forward this season, we'll be looking at examples of movies that are not straight adaptations of classic myth, but they borrow their plot elements, structure, and theme. A good example of this is indeed Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is the third film in a trilogy known as the Evil Dead series. Normally I wouldn't touch a sequel on this show without first reviewing the originals, but Army of Darkness is a special case that puts us into kind of a unique spot. Without spoiling anything major about the Evil Dead films, the first film is very much a classic supernatural horror film about a group of college students. It's well known for its use of stop motion, gore, and somewhat controversial scenes involving trees. Evil Dead 2, a direct sequel, has a change in tone being much more of a dark comedy while still being a fairly standard supernatural horror film as far as the genre is concerned. Army of Darkness, a direct sequel to Evil Dead 2, is wildly different, as it's a dark fantasy movie as well as a dark comedy, while it still retains some horror elements that are comparatively minor in terms of the overall tone. In order to review Army of Darkness, I have to spoil the end of Evil Dead 2. I have no choice. But before I do, I will say that in order to watch Army of Darkness, you do not have to have seen the prior two films, as they're summarized in the beginning, but you will have a greater appreciation for it if you've seen the prior two films. Now without further ado, I will spoil Evil Dead 2. The end of Evil Dead 2 sees the main hero of this series, Ash Williams, get pulled into a portal and flung through time back into the Middle Ages. Army of Darkness picks up right about where Evil Dead 2 leaves off, as Ash is captured by Lord Arthur, mistaken as a soldier of Duke Henry, his rival. The land in this world is plagued by a supernatural curse as the Deadites. The undead fiends of this series infest this world in every nook and cranny. However, when Ash proves that he is not only a badass who can take the fight to these monsters, but also that he might be the savior mentioned in an ancient prophecy, he must quest for the Necronomicon, an important book in these lands, which can return him to his own time period and also stop the darkness that is slowly taking over the land. Army of Darkness is a fantastic film but you need to have a peculiar taste to enjoy it. This is a film you will either love or hate. I personally love it. I find the setting and adventure exciting and cool, the comedy hilarious, and the effects entertaining and effective. The famous Bruce Campbell, the actor who plays Ash Williams in these films, really cements himself as a pop culture badass in Army of Darkness. He's chock full of one-liners that would make even the action movie greats nod their head and smile, he has no shortage of epic action sequences, and is self-aware enough to know the character he plays needs to be in on the joke for them to truly work. The comedy in Army of Darkness is primarily slapstick based, and a lot of it is cartoony in nature accompanied by goofy sound effects. The effects are mostly done practically, being a mix of prosthetics, puppetry, and stop motion. In scenes where the effects are meant to accentuate the dark fantasy aspects, they look professional and they channel the horror roots of this series. Likewise, when the effects are there to accentuate the slapstick and the comedy, they're made purposely to look cheap, goofy, and silly, almost like you're watching a low-budget knockoff film. It's intentional by design and it gives the movie a feeling that it's in on the joke, and for me it keeps it from going over the threshold of being obnoxious. Now if you are someone who doesn't like such things as slapstick comedy, movies with two different but complementary tones and self-awareness, you will not like Army of Darkness. Even though I love it, I can easily understand why others might view this movie as obnoxious, overbearing, ridiculous, and even annoying because of all those things. As far as relating to classic myth in The Quest, the first major nod is the movie pulling elements from medieval myth. Lord Arthur is based on King Arthur, of course, 
And recall that one of the most famous stories about King Arthur revolves around the quest for the Holy Grail, a quest for an object. That's the osmosis of myth into media right there for you. However, the big key is Ash's quest for the Necronomicon. Despite being a wildly different tone and setting, and even harboring a different story structure, it's truly no different than Jason searching for the Golden Fleece, or Thor looking to recover his hammer. Ash, like the heroes of the past, must brave danger to retrieve the item he seeks, and in his quest, the dangers that he faces lead him to discover himself and who he truly is as a person. The idea of a quest for an object can be seen in story after story, film after film, and we've already covered several movies with the same idea already in this series of reviews, season 1 and 2. Army of Darkness is, in the grand scheme of things, just another notch on that belt. But do not be mistaken, reuse of story structure is not what robs stories of originality either. If anything, you should be amazed at how different so many of these stories are while still being so similar, rather than scorn them for being the same idea reused. That's the nature of myth, that's the nature of culture and the nature of humanity. We use what we know about the past and reshape it to the present so that we can learn more about ourselves in the future. Army of Darkness is a prime example of how that idea manifests itself and it certainly helped along by its more unique qualities.